<laughs> but let's talk about PC VR and let's talk about uh, Vertigo and let's talk about Half-Life and all that good stuff. Um, because maybe you should kind of um, introduce yourself, Zach, and, and talk about what you're up to now and maybe sort of go back a little bit and, into how you got into VR in the first place. Obviously, you talked about Scratch uh, in the beginning and how that kind of developed into, you know, your interest into VR. Uh, sure. Uh, so my name is Zach Chakalas Brown. I am 20 years old, and I'm a VR developer. I made Vertigo, Vertigo Remastered, working on Vertigo 2 now. Um, let's see. I, I first got into VR in 2012, 2013, with the um, the Rift DK1. I like I tried it out. I did the um, uh, what, what was that demo called? Tuscany? Like the original Rift demo. Yeah, the Tuscany, Tuscany. demo. Yeah. And I was like, my mind was instantly blown. I was like, oh my god, I wanna, I wanna make games. I wanna be inside my games, like I. So you like, were you like were I'm like inside this Tuscany 13, demo. Thirteen years yeah. old then. Jesus. Yep. And I had no idea how to make games. I had like done some scratch stuff, but I didn't know any Unity or anything. Wow. Um. So my dad like got me Unity and like threw some tutorials at me and I got started making uh, crappy little projects and I haven't stopped making crappy little projects since. <laughs> so wow, well, so, yeah. so this is kind of interesting because so you didn't go through like a college or university learning about game development. It's something you've completely self-taught? Yeah, it's all self-taught um, in my spare time over a very long uh, time period. Yeah. And this is interesting because this isn't the first time we've heard this on the show when we've had developers on the show. Um, we've talked mm -hmm. about, you know, their education and, you know, advice for other people uh, getting into game development. And they've always said, don't worry about like education wise, just go and try stuff, build stuff yourself, learn from, you know, the information that's available online and go from there. So it's interesting that you've kind of followed that path as well. And, and also because, of course, yeah, like for you, it might seem like a like a very long time that you've been doing this, but uh, I think seven seven years starting from your thirteenth is 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 an amazingly short time uh, considering the stuff that you've already delivered. So uh, I I think that's that's very inspirational for a lot of developers as well that uh, that that you can do something like that if you put your heart and, and soul into it. So yeah, very nice. So you, oh, you, when you. you um when you made a uh, Vertigo, uh, obviously it's been recently remastered. So you were sixteen at the time. Um, so how how did that all come about? How did the idea for Vertigo come about, and and how did that end up being launched on Steam, and the difficulties of doing that? Because it's no small feat mm -hmm. getting a game on Steam, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So that that project um, took place over the course of about a year. Um, the original prototype was this like uh, just a very early like room scale VR prototype of mine, where you were on a bridge above a big like deep pit, which is why it's called Vertigo. And I added in some like little robots you could shoot, um, and it just kept growing and growing and growing until I ended up making a full, you know, single-player uh, story game. And um, it, uh, I went through Steam Greenlight to get it on Steam because that was the that was the process at the time in uh, right. 2015, um, and or 2016, so when the game actually came out. Um, and what, what and... are some of the of the of the titles that you were like inspired by in order to like the, the games that you said that really drove you mm -hmm. into like development or maybe even like VR development? Uh, mm -hmm. which, which well, one would you it's it's really funny because everybody um everybody sees the you know clear inspirations from Half Life, but I actually had not played Half Life at that time. <laughs> so I was like, I love Portal. It's my favorite game. Right. Um, what if there was Portal, but with aliens and guns? <laughs> I didn't know Half-Life was a thing. So I started That's making funny. Portal, but with aliens and guns. And then I learned Half-Life was a thing and and realized I'd made Half-Life. That's, <laughs> so that's epic. It speaks to that's like how, Half how influential Half-Life is, that I didn't even have to play it to have its influence <laughs> yeah. like inspire an entire game. Wow. It was pretty nuts. Oh, and how many like, people? Like, it's like you mastered the art of like game design of Half Life, and <laughs> yeah, then exactly. you make it as like, oh wait, it's pretty similar to that. That's yeah, quite impressive. Yeah. And how many people worked on the original Vertigo game other than yourself? Um, so it was mostly me. I was doing all the programming and like Unity sides of things. I had some friends that um, that were an amazing help on kind of writing the story, building the universe, um, doing lots of concept art. So it was. Uh, it was my friend Errol Busey, who's um, a classmate of mine in school. 
yeah. um, who did a lot of the writing and conceptual stuff. And then uh, George, who is um, uh, still working with me a little bit, who is a really talented concept artist and a uh, and good friend of mine. And he's in the UK, so we met on the on the internet. Nice, nice. And, and, and also, you, all the music in the game, you, you write and make the music mm -hmm. for the game as well right which is pretty incredible like if you if you play the remaster like i never played the original um but the soundtrack is incredible so it's pretty amazing that you, you were able to pull that off and have an amazing soundtrack as well uh thank you uh yeah uh, writing music is something i really like to do in my spare time and it mm. happens to be um something that i can kind of include in in my games it really sounds well. you have more spare time than anyone else i have met like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but yeah. how does it work so so when you make gameplay right and you make mm -hmm. music how does that like connect because... uh, usually i make the gameplay first and then i'm like hmm, what kind of music would go along with this and then sometimes i'll like record some gameplay and like have it playing as i'm working on the music oh, yeah. um, so That's i can sync it up yeah, this, it's, it's this, fun. It's this very is the, like creative, what, freeform process. What exactly? What exactly? Um, how do you handle like being called a prodigy? Because I think you are one, uh, and I think that like the fact that you've got sound design, graphic design, the programming side, game design, all this stuff sorted out. You weren't even twenty. I mean, like that's a really good starting point. No wonder people like Val picked up on you. But like, how do you deal with that? Like, is that like too much? fame and kudos or is it like that's all right i got this it's fine i don't think too much of it like how do you handle that kind of thing uh i mean it's it's weird i'm like i'm just i'm just me you know yeah. um i i've had a you know significant amount of, of privilege to to get to where i am and um i don't know as you said like i have a lot of free time to to kind of learn these skills and i have uh, my dad has been super helpful um you know kind of guiding me along this this path mm. um does he work in computer science yeah. or something or like how did you how did you uh, yeah, start so spawned into this uh into this area of work i'm curious he's been kind of all over all over the industry he was on the original xbox team he's like really wow. influential in creating the xbox um, he, he named it the Xbox. He's very proud of that. Oh, sweet. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. That's an <laughs> awesome rad. story, dude. Yeah. Um, and then he, like, he did a bunch of startups for a while, and and then he um, he worked at Valve for a bit, which is how I got my in at Valve. I, like, followed him to work occasionally, and then, um, like, people, other people at Valve, like, saw what I was doing and were like, hey, do you want to, like, make some prototypes for us? How was it for you being a fan of like the, the portal game, like you said, like that you all of a sudden were employed yeah. by a company that uh, you looked up to? That must be an amazing, especially. Uh, yeah, it was it was amazing. Of course it was. Um, yeah, it was it was amazing to like meet the people that had um, uh, made this game that I love so much um, and to, you know, see how they worked and work with them. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was and um, something and, that I noticed uh, in in Vertigo, like I like I said, I didn't play mm -hmm. the original. Uh, I just played the remaster. Uh, but you play like a, a black girl, right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. was that always the the idea from in the original game? Because it's quite a you know a, like we don't see much diversity in games, or well, we see more nowadays. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of interesting to have that as a concept for a game that was like four years old. Was that the original idea? Um, in the original, your character was kind of genderless and you could pick your skin tone so i really wanted right. to keep it kind of like you know i wanted it to just be you yeah um like just create your own character whatever sure um and then uh, as i was like leading into building vertigo 2 i was like hey it might be good if i actually you know gave this character an identity yeah. so um uh, a female friend of mine i had her like redesign the character i was like i need a character i'm not good at <laughs> making characters yeah. up um, so she came up with the the new character. Uh, Sonia is her is her yeah, name. I think I think it's it's, a, it's great. I think it's really really cool, especially you know for for other people out there to see you know a character representing themselves in the game. I think mm -hmm. that's super super smart and it's really interesting. So like, how did um how did it go from Vertigo uh, to then sort of your relationship with Valve? Because you said obviously your your dad sort of had an in there with Valve. Um, yeah. Did they did they sort of see the game or were you sort of had an in with Valve before the original game actually launched? Yeah, it was um, it was during development of of the original Vertigo in 2016 that I um, 
I started just like hanging out at Valve occasionally. Um, like I said, just following my dad to work. And I would just like work on my own projects while I was there. Um, awesome. The original Vertigo demo, um, people were like super excited about it because it had the you know really fun tentacle boss fight, and there's like nothing like that in yep. VR in those days. Yeah. Um, so, like some people at Valve picked up on that, I guess. Um, and then it was kind of during during the development, the early development of the Knuckles controllers, that um, or the Index controllers as they're now known as. Yeah. Um, that that I really started to get involved at Valve because they were like, we need, you know, we have nobody prototyping content for these controllers. Like, mm -hmm. we have a big hardware team, but um, uh, basically everybody that was making games was working on early iterations of Half-Life Alex at that point, and they were um, not really in a place to, like, explore what could be done with uh, with Index controllers. So they, they brought me on to kind of play with interactions and... Um, I made like a really early developer demo that um, went out to some developers, but I don't think it ever went public, or maybe it's on GitHub. Who knows? <laughs> um, and then that led to a year or two later, uh, Moon Dust, of course, which um, yeah. is slightly more public. Um, and yeah, I mean that was just so cool to work on these like cutting edge VR interaction, VR hardware type stuff. Yeah, um, and, and also... you did a great job with that as well, mm -hmm. and also the. Uh... Because if we're talking about like uh, the knuckle controllers or the, or the Valve Index controllers, the integration that you did within the Vertigo 2 demo um, mm -hmm. was 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 amazing. And mm -hmm. I, I actually the, the thing because I don't have uh, those controllers. What I have mm -hmm. is the and I think Zim as well. We have the the Oculus uh, controllers. Mm -hmm. But I have to say the integration that you did, especially in the Vertigo uh, uh, 2 demo of the like the index style kind of feeling that you get with the Oculus controllers. Yeah. It is the best one that I've seen in a single uh, Oculus title so far. Yeah, uh, I don't think there's another one. Maybe maybe Half Life Alex, but of course you had an in in that as well. So uh, I th I think that the the way that you did the, the the Oculus controllers, how it's integrated in the Vertigo Two demo, is uh, it's it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, that's really good to hear. Yeah, um, that's like a big part of um, the the Steam VR input system. Um, and the, the like hand skeletal animation system um, is like making that work really well with all the controllers, and that's something I was involved in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of interesting to that in a lot of games. Involved. Yeah, and like I've been reading through um, like Half Life Alex: The Final Hours. I don't know if you've read it yourself um, from Jeff Keighley. Uh, I haven't read all of it, but I've I've seen bits and pieces. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting to read through the story at Valve. You know, they were going through a difficult time where they didn't ship any products, and you know, a lot of teams internally were working on a lot, like a lot of different projects, but none of them really took off. And then you've got you that are kind of like dipping in and out of Valve and like shipping your own game at like sixteen. It must <laughs> yeah. be kind of interesting. Um, so it's you know, it's no wonder they took you on board. But what was the kind of brief for you when they took you on board, like particularly with like Moon Dust and maybe the, like the lab and, and even Half Life Alex to a certain degree? Was it the hand interactions that they really wanted you to focus on, or was it other aspects of the game as well? Yeah, the hand interactions was the was the main thing. Like they needed um, they needed people that were able to take their hardware and just like create interesting um, interesting software to go along with it. Yeah, uh, and maybe it's because they were you know having some they're having so much trouble with um shipping stuff internally they were like okay screw it let's just have have this kid uh do it for us yeah we can ship stuff this is so um, cool i will say that it's my specialty is like actually shipping stuff um uh, you know making small projects yeah not being too afraid to put them out there can I ask yeah, a question that, on that actually? Just go on, on, go on. Yeah, I just wanted to ask. So time management, I talked about it earlier, right? But one of the secrets I always think as someone who's who's really good at something is you're able to not like let the train run away with you. How do you and do you have any tips for other devs who are starting and just finding, you know, spinning all the things that you seem to do and again make make appear effortless? How do you how do you chunk that out? Like do you say twenty percent on music, thirty percent on game design, what do you eat for breakfast? You know, like what are the what are the simple things that you would recommend other developers uh, if they're starting out? Well, I don't exactly have like a hard and fast strategy on that. Um, 
And I, I definitely suffer from the classic like feature creep as well. My projects will end up going a lot longer than, than intended. Um, like Vertigo Remastered, that was supposed to be like three or four months and ended up being six months uh, working on that. Uh, but at, at a certain point, I, you know, you really have to go like, okay, I need to ship this at some point. Um, so I, I ended up locking down my shipping date for Vertigo Remastered to July in like, I don't know, April or March. Um, and uh, from that point forward, it was just like, okay, you know, I'm going to have to cut this feature. I'm going to have to cut this section. Like, mm -hmm. tough luck. Yeah. It, because we it's hard to do that as a game developer because, like, everything feels like your baby. But yeah, sure. because you're, you're saying, like, I'm good at shipping. And I was like laughing a little bit, but that is a big deal because you work on it for so long and yeah. then there needs to be a moment where you need to put it out. Is that something yep. you, when you speak to other developers that they are scared of shipping? It's a big deal. I totally um, get it. it. How, do you, how do you deal with like, how do you pull the trigger where you're like, okay, let's just do it. Let's just launch it now. Let's just go for it and hope for the best. Um, I mean, there comes a point whenever you ship anything that you have to say that, like, you know, it's not perfect. Um, but you have to get it out there. I yeah yeah. I I know like Valve went through that. They didn't. They they were super scared and nervous as they as they talked about in the final hours to, mm. to ship Half Life Alex. Mm. Um, but a, at a certain point, they just had to say, okay, you know, we gotta we gotta wrap this up. We gotta okay. get it out there. So do you do you um, like to have that pressure of like working to the final parts of a game? Or are you more like if I have like you know um, some time to properly <laughs> then. You know, I wouldn't say I like that pressure, but uh, it's definitely productive. <laughs> you know, when you're when you're working with a deadline, um, puts the fire yeah. underneath your your, your bum yeah. and you have to get it done, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, and especially when it's like a imminent deadline. It's not a deadline like two years out. It's like okay, you know, in two months this has to be done. So what do I have to do to get it to that point then? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Um, did from... you tours, the job tours were invited to go for drinks with Lord Gavin. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> have you met Have you met Gabe though? Uh, yeah, a few times. He's been around. Yeah. I got to demo uh, Moon Dust to him when I finished that. That was really fun. Oh wow! Wow, that must have been like a you know like highlight of your life, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> meeting such a legend. Yeah. Uh, were you, I bet you must have been super nervous doing that, or were you kind of like you know brushing it off, kind of chill about it? Uh, yeah, I was nervous, but you know, at the end of the day, it's just another VR yeah. demo. Yeah. yeah so so to kind of um so what like you worked on moondust you worked on the lab also have like alex so is there let's say for yeah it's gonna sound funny average joes i need to think about the joes every time i say that for some reason <laughs> but um but uh can you like point out what you made exactly in, in terms of, like is there an example like let's say in in the lab or moondust uh, like what what did you make exactly uh sure so moondust it was i, I did like the majority of moon dust uh all the art um a lot of the like cool like hand interactions and animations um mm -hmm. all of that was was my work and then so ended squeezing, up getting... for example like yes squeezing into <laughs> a, a grenade or is it also yeah. the same for have life alex where you have to send grenades and you squeeze uh, yeah them? that was i was inspired by by moon dust and also, like I remember you sharing that tweet uh, where you push the button, the the physical interaction that you get from that. Is that also something that you did? Um, I can't remember what the tweet was, but yeah, I, I made the the buttons in the new versions of the lab that I worked a long time on making those really satisfying. Yeah, and certainly yeah, from yeah, I think it's done. From playing like Vertigo Remastered, you see the similarities in like the input method and like the weapon selectors and stuff like that from like Half Life mm -hmm. Alex. Oh. Was mm -hmm. that heavily inspired by Vertigo? That kind of like weapon uh, selection? Partly, yeah. That kind of weapon wheel type move your hand into the weapon. Because yeah. uh, Vertigo had that originally and it like it worked really well. And there have been a few games that do that. Um, I think like Hover Junkers was one of the really early games to mm -hmm. do that type of weapon select. I like it a lot. It's my favorite. Yeah, kind of and, I'm really and happy obviously that. you said previously that like you you hadn't played Half Life and you you kind of like made you know a very Half Life inspired game without ever playing it. But when you was like sort of brought on board to work on Alex, were you then like okay now I need to go back and I need to play these games, I need to understand you know the st the story more, the world and everything else? Yeah, after I started working at Valve, I definitely was like oh I should probably go play Half Life. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I, I got never brought like. 
officially onto the Alex team, just so that's okay. clear. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. I was I was just working on um, Moon Dust in the lab, and they occasionally like somebody from the team would come to me, and we would chat about like um, you know input or throwing, um, like getting throwing physics feeling good. Yeah, that kind of. And how did you? We can't, uh, did, we can't miss a we, well, we can't uh, miss a big question here. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Uh, Rod, you okay. take the chat question first. No, no. There's, there's. I said there's a lot of questions. It's just oh, for later. To reserve a bit okay. of time. We'll do that. Yeah. I just um, wanted to ask one thing. You played go, go. Half Life. Did you like it? Yeah, <laughs> I think I liked it uh, even more than Portal. I'm a hardcore Half Life fan now. And were there any parts of Half Life or Half Life Two that you played? At, I suppose Half Life Alex can come in there as well. Where you thought like, ah, I did that bit better, or that, I, I should have I should have picked that up. You know, if I had only played this first, that, anything like that. Uh, ooh, I don't know. It's a hard question, I know. Yeah. Um, not off the top of my head. Or do I mean, you have a favorite, like, favorite moment in Alex? What? Or do you have a favorite moment in Alex? You know, something that you thought was super, super cool? Favorite moment. Um, well, I really like Jeff. I mean, everybody really likes Jeff. But yeah. yeah, that chapter was like one of the best horror experiences I've ever had playing it the first time. Hmm. Awesome. Incredible. And a lot of people in the chat are talking about ladders because, you know, uh, the oh, ladders yeah. the ladders in Vertigo uh, remastered, you know, I have to say, there's, there's some of the best ladders I've ever tried because, you know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But playing Boneworks, a big complaint of mine was the ladders because, you know, they had this like awful head bob and then getting off the ladders was super awkward. But in, yeah. in Vertigo remastered, and I guess it will happen again in, in Vertigo 2, when you climb the ladders, you almost like snap to the, the gantry or whatever you're climbing up to. And it feels very natural and you have confidence in the system that you're not going to fall. But that's kind of hard to implement, right? Um, it's I wouldn't say it's super hard to implement. It was kind of a hard design problem to think about like, OK, how do I make the ladder work how you want it to work 100 percent of the time or you know 99 percent of the time? Um, but the actual implementation wasn't too bad okay um you know, there's there's stuff like minimizing the springiness because um you, you are like having to use physics to move the player to to get them to not pass through walls but you know kind of making it less springy and annoying um as bone works is a little uh, a little bit much springy of that. and annoying yeah <laughs> um maybe we should yeah. take some questions from the chat then have we got yeah, some I just uh, to say yeah, one, go. one more thing well two things actually since we were talking about vertical remastered and something that i still want to highlight and i know mike highlighted in a tweet as well uh, first off is that you have uh, you see your arms uh, there's not a lot of vr games that actually do that was that a, a specific design choice or uh, is that something that you think more vr games should do because i've heard a lot of people say because you need to use some kind of inverse kinematics it starts to look a little bit more goofy or a little bit more arcadey um yeah. but you seem to have nailed that pretty well what is yeah. your what are your thoughts on that um i think i like arms quite a bit um when, when they work well as i feel like i've made them work pretty well yeah, um they don't distract too much they um i don't know i i don't like get my immersion super broken by their not being arms but i feel like they're because half-life are... alex doesn't have it that's mm -hmm. that's why i'm saying it yeah and i don't feel like i've ever had you know my immersion broken in half-life alex by not having mm -hmm. arms because, you know the rest of that universe is just so incredible yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and that, then the second thing i wanted to say as well is that uh, the camera input features that you had in yeah. the original uh, vertigo and uh, vertical remastered now as well is uh, maybe some of the best that we've seen in uh, in VR games. Uh, like, do do you realize how, like how important that is for? Do you do that for like content creators in order to make better content, or is it is there another specific reason why you? Because you clearly spend a lot of time on like making the game look nice on a, on a flat monitor or on on a on a recording uh, uh, software device. W what are your thoughts on that? Hmm. Uh, that's a great question. So what that that was is actually that's just my internal tools for recording trailers um, exposed to to let content creators take advantage of it. So obviously making the trailers, I had to do some work to get it to look nice and run nice on uh, on flat monitors so I could record. Could you do that for all developers? Like for <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there are some like, tools like Live is trying to make um, like content creation a lot more um, friendly. Um, but yeah, it's it's tough because I know like Half Life, uh, Valve did, did a much more um, kind of hands-on approach to making their trailers, where they like recorded gameplay and then they would like play it back, not in real time, so they could like really smooth it out. 
um, and that's not viable for content creators. But um, my approach happened to be, which was take this pretty um, kind of uh, not very graphically intensive game and render it a second time with a really nice, smooth, uh, high definition camera. Yeah. I think um, the, the the great thing about uh, what you implemented was that you could, as a content creator, you could sacrifice the view that you were actually looking at inside the headset to make it look yeah. good on a video. And, and it's something that we've done historically in the past. You know, Nathie and I suffered through playing Marvel Powers United with one eye just so we could oh. increase uh, the field of view <laughs> so it looks nice on a video. And I yeah, think, yeah. you know, for you to understand that mindset is super important and a lot of other developers can certainly learn from that, I think. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, and again, also. that's just my um, my trailer creation mindset because I also, you know, I had to make a, a nice uh, 60 frames per second trailer and, uh, yeah. and to do that, I had to, you know, make some sacrifices. So. But it's good that you are aware of that what you make should also be looked at at like a proper way because there are developers mm -hmm. who make amazing games but then when they put out a trailer or they let people play it it just doesn't look that great so it's good mm -hmm. that you know how people are going to look at your game because you know the better the field of view the smoother the camera the like the better it represents what you made in the end and it would be a shame yep. if all those work hours are gonna be in the left corner of the gameplay that someone is yeah. doing, you know? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll go I'll go over some of the questions maybe. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, do. There's quite a few. Uh, first, we had uh, Paradise Decay, he said, I would like to know if you have any plans for Vertigo to come to the Quest. <laughs> oh, uh, well, that would be incredible. I would love to ship it on the Quest. I don't know how realistic that is, just as a single man team. I would have to do a lot of porting over to the Oculus SDK to support that and probably some optimization too um mm -hmm. so short answer i would love to but i'm not sure if that's going to happen unfortunately yeah, okay and then we have uh, a couple of questions that you you already answered with vr buck asking how did you get involved with valve but you already talked about that one uh, we also uh, had a question from uh, jan chan who said uh, did zach develop all of vertigo solos just the animations character models gameplay etc but you you briefly commented on like uh, on like i don't know if you want to say anything more about that but I, I um, sure. yeah most of the like actual what you'd consider game development was solo but um but then a bunch of the you know universe building world building um concept art and planning was done with with some friends yeah all right uh then we have max fernandez saying zach when is vertigo 2 coming out pressure 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 <laughs> <laughs> i know so much pressure uh no release date yet but yeah i'll let you guys know as soon as i know that's easy. I want to extend on that question. It's like it's it, it's kind of mad to me that you went Vertigo, all the other projects that you were involved with, decided to shoehorn in Vertigo Remastered, with the with the kind of commitment there to Vertigo too. Like, do those not kind of get carnivorous off of one another and and end up you know oh I should be working on that one but I've got to ship this one. Is has that been difficult in the last kind of year for you? Um, yeah, it has. And the last year has been complicated, as I'm, I'm sure it has been for a lot of people. Um, you know, I started I started uh, college last fall, and then I left college because of the pandemic um, in spring. Um, so now I'm back to making games full time for now. Um, it's been weird and chaotic, but, you know, as long as I'm making games, I'm happy. That's nice. awesome. On, yeah. That's awesome. We yeah. had uh, VR Buck asking, what headsets does Zach own and what is his favorite and why? Good question. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, my favorite is definitely the Valve Index, and that is not because uh, because <laughs> I'm a former Valve employee. I just <laughs> I love that headset so much. The comfort is so good. As someone that like needs to be in headset all day, it is very nice that it actually feels And then good. are there any other ones that you own as well, or uh, is that the one? Yeah, I've got, I got a Quest right here. Um, I've got a Rift CV1 somewhere packed up, I think. I have a WMR that just crapped out, unfortunately. It's a display cable. Um, and I have a Vive somewhere that I haven't used in years. That, that suffices, I think. <laughs> uh, then we have a D1360VR. What programming language should we focus on for Unity VR? Uh, definitely C-sharp for Unity. C-sharp, all right. Um, the VR vibe kind of extended on that question as well. What did you use to learn how to code and create VR games? And what type of codes do you have to use to make a VR game? Or, you already discussed Sharp and uh, uh, Scratch. Scratch and C Sharp. 
Um, yeah, is there anything else that you would recommend? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like Unity is a great option for making VR games at the moment. Um, yeah, there are a lot of tutorials out there, a lot of resources. Yeah, of course, of course. And then a final one that I noted down was from Chris Richardson, who asked, does Zach have any thoughts about melee combat? Has he tried Saints and Sinners? I have not. I have not gotten a chance to try Saints and Sinners. Um, I'm not super into melee combat personally, but I know a lot of people are. Um, so I did spend some time uh, making that feel good in Vertigo Remastered. Um, mm. And yeah, I'd be down to play Saints and Sinners at some point. Are oh, you sure? That's, that's so interesting because just like you said before, you didn't play Half-Life, you know, before. It's mm -hmm. like you just know the art of how to make proper video game. Because mm. the thing is, with a lot of developers that I spoke to in the past, a lot of them are playing a lot of games to kind of understand what's going on. They play Saints and Sinners to understand why it's so popular and why the you know, melee combat is so good and stuff like that. But you seem to be able to just, you know, in your head, create something and test it out. And it just comes to life by itself. And I think that's, that's, that's very, uh, you know, special, I would say, something that... It's a very charitable way to say I don't do my research, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's natural I'm talent, sure. I think. He's yeah, yeah, trying yeah. to say, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. And also that 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 that's the thing that that I love about you is that you know when I played Vertigo uh, in 2016, I thought it was one of the best games I've ever played. And then years later, even when it was not even remastered yet, it was still holding up as one of the mm. best titles out there. Um, in my opinion, it could have always uh, had more attention from the community, uh, and and hopefully with you know remastered that will, you know, kind of uh, sparkle a little bit more. Um, but that's something that most developers are not able to. You know, a lot of the games that we are now talking about, like oh, you know, those games from 2016, yeah, they didn't age well. You know, but hmm. Vertigo Remastered uh, is aging very well, actually. And <laughs> yeah, and I've, I've got a question crazy. about that actually. Um, so, you know, obviously you're working on Vertigo 2, um, the sequel to Vertigo, but why did you choose to remaster the original game? Like, why didn't you just leave it in its original form? Like, what was the, the rationale in your mind to make it, to refresh it? Um, well, it unfortunately had a bunch of, uh, like, major bugs that were kind of stopping people from enjoying it as much as I feel like they could be. Okay. And also seeing, like, how much progress my systems have made since Vertigo 1. Mm -hmm. um, into Vertigo 2 and some of the like new fancy stuff that I was building for Vertigo 2. I was just like, it seems like it would be um, fairly little effort for a giant payoff of having this like really great remastered version of the game. Yeah. And so I just went for it. And it yeah. seems like I definitely made the right choice with that. Oh, 100%. Yeah. You know, having played it now, and because I played the Vertigo 2 demo first. Then I played Vertigo Remastered. Now I seem to understand the story more, which is great. And I think that's the reason why you should go back and play the remaster. Not only is it a great game, but you'll understand the story going into the sequel. Um, but to sort of wrap this sort of uh, interview up and Q&A up, and I really appreciate your time, by the way. It's been super in interesting to find out about your development history. Um, you know, beyond Vertigo 2, uh, what have you got planned for the future? You know, would, would, would you ever consider returning to Valve or is college your next big step or, you know, you've got another career planned? What's, what's the future like uh, in your mind? Um, you know, at the moment, I have no idea what the future is going to be like. Um... I know I want to keep working on Vertigo 2. Um, it, it was amazing working at Valve. I would certainly be happy to go back there someday. It'd also be fun to work um, with a with a smaller with some other smaller studio. Maybe not mm -hmm. just like just me though. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep weighing my options and uh, trying to figure out what's best. Okay. I don't think you'll be short of offers, that's for sure, uh, <laughs> yeah. after, uh, you know, no. the community sees, um, you know, what you've managed yeah. to achieve in Vertigo Remastered and, and the sequel, which yeah. is obviously coming soon as well. So, like, um, we, like, we as the VR uh, scene are very happy that, you know, you're, you know, yeah. uh, uh, making these games. And also that I think that the games you have made so far are also speaking to the mainstream gamers, you know, because Vertigo is like, wow, man. This is this is what I wanted for a while, you know. It, it's it's a higher standard that that is just not as just the, let's say the normal games that come out. It's like yeah. something that I would really like. I would be like, okay, let's turn up Rocket League, 
let's turn off uh, I don't know GTA or something else I'm playing and let's play some Vertigo uh, uh, you know one or two because it really speaks to to the gamers out there and I think that's that's like something that is pretty special yeah one last thing I'd say is probably just on education is um, I know you're just going through university st stuff now but consider you know where you are and as achieved as you've gotten and the number of things that you think you know you seem to be doing very well um teaching others you know have you ever considered maybe kicking off something like an apprenticeship in your 20s uh, you know helping to uh get other budding bright young people along in the path i think you could do a lot of good uh for the broader industry obviously you've only got one pair of hands unfortunately um and it's great to see that effect span so i hope you consider that for your future at some point zach yeah good suggestion good suggestion well thank you again zach for joining us it's been an absolute pleasure uh talking to you um but now let's sort of uh pivot and dive straight into uh releases with zim as i know we're running on a little bit and i appreciate one more thing uh, everyone's super busy to go to is in the description so if you want to play it on steam go check it out it's yeah. a demo uh and also a link to Zach's website, so if you want to learn more about what he's doing, yeah. what he did in the past, or if you want to grab some sweet-ass Vertigo merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> is there really merchandise? I didn't yeah, see that. Yeah, there is merchandise, too. I've made some merch. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I just want that, I want that Zillow, Zillow in your spare production. time, you mean. Yeah, spare yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be in the trailer. I made the, you know, Vertigo 2, I made this in my spare time. <laughs> <laughs>